Welcome to Jank Brews, where we brew standard decks and play them in ranked battles on the arena. If you like that sort of thing, like and subscribe, you know. Today we've got a, a fairly janky brew. There's plenty of good cards in here, but um, we wanted to play with Narsa and Lightened Exile. And we tried previously to make it viable in our Boros equipment deck and just didn't get there. So we've got a, a spicy approach to it here that's uh, probably similar to decks you've seen in eras of standard magic past. We'll get into it, uh, starting with Knights, Narset, Enlightened Exile. <clears throat> uh, three, four, 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 just guy colors. It says creatures you control have prowess. Whenever Narset and Lighted in Exile attacks, exile target non-creature, non-land card with mana value less than Narset's power from a graveyard and copy it, you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. This is especially interesting because it doesn't have to be instant or sorcery, it can be any non-creature, non-land card. Um, again, that's why I was trying to brew it up with some swords and such in Boros, or a, a version of uh, Bor Boros with Jeskai colors. But we're going more the traditional route here where um, we're going to be copying instants and sorceries for the most part and making use of that that prowess. So the Wandering Emperor can also be hit, uh, noting off of Narset, particularly if Narset's power is plus one. And we'll take a quick glance here at Reckless Stormseeker, uh, one of the other creatures we're playing a full four copies. Uh, that, I don't know if it quite belongs, but I really just wanted to to uh, be able to bash with a 4-4 Narset, potentially triggering a Wandering Emperor off of Narset's ability. So Restless Storm Seeker is also just a good magic card. So it uh, helps us get there occasionally. We're going to bounce over here and take a glance at our fun ups. We almost always play some fun ups here on Jank Brew. And we've got a copy of Brawl and Kari Zev. Uh, first Strike Menace 2-4 for 3. And whenever we cast our first instant or sorcery spell each turn... Oh, sorry about that. Uh, you may cast a spell with lesser mana value that shares a card type it with it from your hand without paying its mana cost. If you don't, create First Mate Ragavan, a legendary 2-1 red monkey pirate creature token. It gains haste until end of turn. This card has been good in my testing. Uh, it's not the greatest with our one fun of copy of Angel Fire Ignition because I think this is our only sorcery. <laughs> so you can't trigger anything else off of Angel Fire Ignition. But again, uh, really, you know, it, it, this is a great card to have against the red and Boros decks that we're going to see a lot of. Giving a, a creature vigilance so it can still be a blocker for the turn. Trample, lifelink, indestructible, and haste. All pretty great against those those styles of decks. So we've got a fun of copy of Angel Fire uh, Ignition. Plays well with Prowess and such, obviously. And we can get it out of the yard with Narset if it's there, too. So uh, we'll bop over to Monastery Mentor, um, great magic card from Eras of Magic Past, and it's in standard right now. It's not the greatest in this deck because we don't have a lot of ways to like trigger it off a bunch of times, so I don't want the full four copies. We're only playing, I think, 15 total creatures here. You could argue to play more Monastery Mentors and, and fewer, perhaps even Malcolm, which we'll get to in a second, but uh, this is Jank Bruise, and sometimes we do things a little jankily around here. So we'll round out the creature exploration with Malcolm. This card has been fun for me in other builds, and it has some potential place in a tempo deck where it's got flash. We can hold up our soul partitions, our lightning strikes, our lightning helixes, and flash Malcolm in at the end of a turn. This is probably the first card I would consider cutting from this deck. Certainly if you're looking for creatures, there's probably a bunch you could consider. Uh, but I wanted another creature at two, and the fact that this had flash and flying and the little, uh, you know, uh, loot ability makes it interesting. So we've got two copies of Malcolm. We have the full four copies of Bloodthirsty Adversary. This card is uh, a good fit because you can play it on two with haste, uh, get some bashes in against more controlling decks. Uh, or, of course, you can play it on five and recast any number of our instants and sorceries, uh, which potentially could even trigger Narset if Narset's in play. Uh... On the instance and sorcery front, we've got full four copies of Lightning Helix. We've got full four copies of Lightning Strike. We've got full four copies of Soul Partition. You may have heard me talk about this card before and that I think it's a trap for control players where you're essentially two for one yourself if the game goes long. But because this deck intends to win quickly uh, with Burn and with Creature Bashing, I think Soul Partition is best suited for a deck like this and has so far been quite good. 
Beyond that, we've got a trio of cards at one. We've got two considers. We've got two fading hopes. We've got two play with fires. Just cheap spells to cast uh, to tr trigger uh, prowess or to um, give our bloodthirsty adversaries or narsets easy things to target. Plenty of options to consider there. Our mana base is relatively simple. We are playing 24 lands. We've got 14 sources of each color. I haven't done the math to determine if that's exactly right, but it's pretty close to what I, I want. And we care more about fast lands than we do in some of the other decks. If you've watched uh, the Titania deck tech, for example, we don't care as much about what we're doing on turns one, two, and three. Uh, but here we do, and it's kind of balanced between the colors. So we've got uh, full four copies of each of the available slower lands um, because turns three and beyond, we'd really love to hit our colors. And often we don't care so much about hitting our colors on turn one. So we've got two copies of each, uh, Shivan Reef and Battlefield Forge. We don't want to paint ourselves too much against the current meta, but I think those cards are worthwhile. You'll notice that we're not including uh, Scry, not Scry, Surveil Lands, and at present, I'm not even including any Restless lands, the creature lands, because we care more about getting our action uh, from the cards in our deck. We don't intend to too often be playing from behind. And if we, I, I think a reasonable sideboard consideration, if you wanted a best of three version of this deck, would be to include Restless lands. And maybe you include, include a couple of Restless lands uh, in your not as janky version, who knows. But... For, for right now, we're going straight for the dome and not worrying about lands that enter the battlefield tapped too often. Without further ado, let's get into some action. Ooh. Sorry, we've been brewing all sorts of jank here. Gotta get back to... The right deck. This is an okay opening hand. I wish I had one fast land or one pain land, <clears throat> but we're going to roll with it even on the draw. I feel like every other game that I play in standard ranked lately is War Leader's Call. Boros, Convoke. And at least half the time they have a novice inspe inspector in the opening hand. So let's see. We're more likely to have need of red. I guess I could have made the argument to place uh, Storm Park Coast. That would give us both red and blue, plus the planes on turn two. Lethal Demolition is a, a great turn two play for them, especially if they can now uh, convoke out. I feel like this is such a common, yeah, Knight Errant. I feel like I've, I've seen this exact sequence so often that it, it boggles my mind because you need three different cards <laughs> uh, in those early hands. Not a lot we can do here. I think I'm going to play out a Bloodthirsty Adversary just to, I don't know, maybe stymie some attacks. If they just land War Leader's Call, we probably are dead already. Born in the Inner Sky, definitely bad for us. It would be, it'd be great if we had play with fire in response. Just the scry ability uh, uh, helps them get where they want to go pretty quick. Of course, it was if it was on top of their deck to begin with, not a lot we can do.
We're just going to keep playing cards out. <clears throat> we don't have any meaningful interaction against Knight Errant or Warden of the Inner Sky. I'm a little surprised they didn't just go all out there with everybody rather than pumping the Warden. We're not getting a lot of help from the top of our deck. <clears throat> and unfortunately, at this point, like Narset isn't especially useful. I think I might prefer to just have play with fire. Hmm. I don't know. This is a deck that really wants to be a, an aggressor, and we're so far behind that we're going to need help from the top of our deck. Such that... I think Narset is fine, if we're not just straight up dead. There are a lot of cards on top of our opponent's deck. Or that could be on top of our opponent's deck that just have a straight up dead uh, war leader's call. Guy that gives everybody haste and plus one plus zero. So let's see, we're taking six in the sky regardless. We could double block a knight errant. <clears throat> or we could go to one. <laughs> Block these other guys. Well, actually, we can't do that. Uh, we should be blocking the one twos. Monastery Mentor is a little too little, too late. We don't even have anything in the bin that we can bloodthirsty adversary, so I shall <laughs> We'll do what we can. <laughs> Guess I could have played Monastery Mentor first. Uh so it would get gives everybody like double prowess. It's kinda of funny. Um, yeah. Mistakes were made. Oh, I forgot I can cast their their cards, too. This is something important to note with Narset. Uh, I keep being su surprised by that every time I see it. I'm like, oh, no. Um, not going to do a whole lot of good here, but... We have a lot of prowess triggers. Oh man, Angel Fire Ignition would be quite nice. Alas, just a little too late. GG's. Not a great start to Narset. My win rate against Boros overall has been great. Here we are, di Diamond Tier 3. We got lucky in that we didn't get notched down. Uh, most of my bruises lately have been playing at the bottom of uh, Tier 4. I just keep brewing a bunch of 50-50 jank. At best, some of the uh, recent jank brews have been less than 50% win rate. So hanging out around the bottom of Diamond. Usually I try to by the middle of... The season today is the the 16th of february i, I usually try to uh, rank to mythic with some deck that's not not as janky um 
But I've been having so much fun brewing with the new sets and old cards that I hadn't got around to last season. This is a little bit of a painful opening hand, but we've got action and we're a land or two away from things being good. So we're going to try to get lucky. Another Storm Seeker is not what we want. Another Soul Partition, also not what we want. This is a place where Malcolm feels reasonably good in that if we don't draw the land on the next turn, we get a loot. Spelunking. I have no idea what to expect, but it looks janky, so we have to give it some love. We are... We're playing against a bunch of caves. Okay, so we didn't get there. I'm inclined to, I don't know what we're up against here. I'm inclined to, however, just like slam out of Bloodthirsty Adversary. Just get in, get in some damage. Okay. Uh, I'm probably gonna dump a Soul Partition even though I don't know what we're up against. I'm not certain if that's right. Alternatively, we could dump a Storm Seeker, but source, uh, Soul Partition can be recast by a handful of our cards, whereas Reckless Storm Seeker in the yard does us absolutely no good whatsoever. We have no way to bring back creatures. Okay, so Sunfall is not what I wanted to see there, but kind of glad we didn't dump the Storm Seeker. Um, so the question is, do we, do we play Narset, or do we play a Storm Seeker? And I'm going to hope that we draw a land next turn and just go ahead and play Narset. <clears throat> Such that we could Soul Partition or Lightning Helix and attack with a Storm Seeker. Worst case scenario, we have a Soul, soul Partition in the graveyard. So as long as Narset survives uh, to the point where she attacks we would be able to cast it. I don't love casting it on this board. I guess I'd probably target this little incubator token. Because <laughs> at least it can't be recast. But okay, so we didn't get there with the land. Um, in which case, probably just going to slam Stormseeker. We don't need to pump Narset. We're going to cast this despite it not being like the most optimal. <clears throat> because we want to remove the blocker and we want the prowess triggers. Sure, Surge of Salvation. I think we're going to get blown up again. There we go. Now, still really glad that we didn't dump the Stormseeker, because we're going to need it. All right, there's the land. Uh, so we're going to run out Stormseeker. Bash. feel a little bit behind, but I still have no idea what my opponent's payoffs are. Up the Beanstalk. Not a thing we want to be soul partitioning. We're probably going to Lightning Helix or Lightning Strike to the dome here if we don't see anything worth soul partitioning. <clears throat> I don't know which is correct, Lightning Strike or Lightning Helix, but I'd rather they not know about Helix, I guess, comparatively. I don't hate having Fading Hope. This is a, a case for possibly wanting a restless land, although I'm not sure I would use it here. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna fading hope this. I think. I mean I want I want the uh, scry uh, trigger. Um, a lot of what they've played so far I don't want a soul partition. So I don't love having that remaining in hand. Whereas like a fading hope against let's see, Malcolm I think is Fine, it's at least another threat, meaning if they remove my existing threat, I got nothing left, so we'll take Malcolm here.
Okay. Sunfall is not the greatest for us. I hope they don't have any caves left. I really, I really don't want them gaining four life here. We're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and helix. <clears throat> so we, all, we have a lot of potentially lethal threats, assuming they don't spelunk some more. That guy has reach, which is pretty annoying for Malcolm. So we may end up soul partitioning it. <clears throat> end of turn. Ah, oh, it's kind of annoying because, well, we're going to do it anyway. You give him another card off of up the beanstalk. But I just I want the loot trigger. Like if we if we can get any uh three mana burn spell, as of right now, they're dead. One one. Okay, didn't get there. Draw a discard. And we got there. Validation for Malcolm. We'll take it. One and one. Hobo Dragon. Huh. This is not the greatest opening hand, though we, I'd say without Fade It and Hope it, it was a 6, it, it would arguably be keepable. <laughs> um, so I think we're going to run with it. Argoth. Maybe this guy. Okay, they did not watch our deck. At the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. If there are three or more creatures in your graveyard, transform this dude. And I think it's like a 3-3 three, three with... Yeah, okay. Um... I'm probably just going to play with fire that guy. I don't really want it doing anything, and I have my next turn sort of planned out with Stormseeker anyway, so. <clears throat> I don't hate having a play with fire in the bin. At least we haven't drawn any more blue cards. Oh, I think I have seen this deck. Not a lot going on here. Part of me wants to use Angel Fire Ignition just because I don't, again, have a lot of action to be doing otherwise. And it makes it so if they were just going to throw this dude out as a blocker, it's not as good. It's only getting one point of damage soaked up rather than three. So they said they may not even block, so. 12 is fine. And I like having counters on Stormseeker. If they don't have removal for Stormseeker, it just makes it better. Uh, hmm. Part of me wants to soul partition both of these guys and then bash. <laughs> uh, I could put more counters. I'm really going all in on Reckless Stormseeker. But I think I'm alright with that. Knowing that we can bounce in or remove these guys the next turn, they don't do anything else. Yeah, from five, we're like one uh, burn spell away from them just being dead. 
if they want to fill their graveyard up and make Urborg Lurgoyf something, that's cool. We can Fading Hope it. We can Soul Partition it. The only thing we just don't want to have happen is them remove the Reckless Stormseeker. Okay, and we've, we got the <laughs> Stormcarp Ghost, finally. So uh, we just win here, I think. Um, bounce one, Helix one. Sure. GG's. Not how we usually draw it up, but... Our opponent kind of stumbled on whatever they were doing there. So we're 2-1. and one. We've seen both of our fun ofs. Barl and Kurdzev in game one. And our lone sorcery in game three. Mr. Narrator. This has all the colors of the rainbow that we need, and we're on the play. It, it would be much better if we had an instant or sorcery, but we have so many in this deck. 24 lands, 15 creatures, that I feel it's reasonable to keep and hope to draw some earlier action. Got a deck brewing with Fairy Dream Thief right now. Okay, so since we didn't draw... <clears throat> just flying it. Uh, I think we're just going to slam and bash. Our hope here, if anything, is that they burn a removal spell on Bloodthirsty Adversary such that they don't have it for Brawl and Carry Zev or Reckless Stormseeker or Narset. Um, the the optimal play here is Reckless Stormseeker, I think. So we're going to do that. It is susceptible to cut down, whereas Brawl and Karzev is not. I'd really hate to lose Reckless Stormseeker to a cut down. But sometimes you got to take risks in life, you know what I'm saying? My hope is, or I was hoping that they would burn a less conditional removal spell on the Bloodthirsty Adversary. Well, no longer susceptible to cut down. Let's see what we got here. Shieldred's Edict. Okay. That counts as a, I think, less conditional. Okay, Liliana is bad. Mm, okay, Lightning Helix. The greedy play here is just to play Narset. And that's what we're going to do. This is, this is what we came here to do. Hoping that if Lily makes us both discard, that a card in our graveyard is better than a card in their graveyard. Of course, if Narset just gets removed, our hope is that we draw a land such that we're all in Kari Zev plus one of our remaining instants of sorceries, or just instants, I suppose, in this case, allows us to get first mate Ragavan. Don't shield rid me, bro. Soul Partition is fine against shield rid, but I think because of the potential for shield rid, if Lily says discard 
right now, I would discard Helix. Even though I don't love the idea of soul partitioning Lily. Or the Fairy Dream Thief. <laughs> Either of those are good plays. If they do us a favor by giving us the information first, which they did not. Drop it. Uh, we're still going to, I think, take the risk. If they don't remove Narset... Hmm. If we put this whole partition in the graveyard, then they'll know that they would lose Shieldred to it. So we're going to go here. Hate doing that. Because if they remove Narset, it, it means that Lily is really annoying. Like, and, and or we'd have to soul partition Lily, which is just feels awful. Okay, so we did get land. Now I really wish I had that Helix back, because Helixing Lily is way better here than Soul Partitioning anything. Um, we may end up just Soul Partitioning the Dream Thief, just to get it out of the way. We are tempoing after all, and Kari Zev makes that play a lot better, the first mate. One Liliana is worse as of right now. And I'm going to be kind of the opposite of Greedy and send these guys both over here. Oh gosh, I'm so stupid. How many times am I going to have to learn this lesson? Because uh, <laughs> I, I keep forgetting that I can use their cards. Uh, oh gosh, this, this just became such a worse play. right? So if I had not been a moron, um, I make them sacrifice. And I, know I get all these triggers, so I'd be hitting our opponent for... Eight instead of three here. I deserve to lose this game, by the way. They should they should just board wipe us. We would we would deserve every bit of it. There is a five mana board wipe in black now. Gix's command is close. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, um, so I like the difference here being like any any um, any top deck of well, I guess technically we would need two <laughs> uh, because I would not have like uh, zapped them, but they'd be so close to dead. Like our the top of our deck would be so much more alive. Right now we're basically dead because I'm a moron. Angel fire ignition, nothing to do with it. We're gonna keep playing, but. This is as close to rage quitting as uh, uh, Jank Brews gets when I make like an egregious error. I I've brewed a deck specifically around a card and I don't understand how to play that card. That's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, we're, we're getting all the uh, the punishment here. We deserve it. Shouldered plus, plus Gix is a great combo. Holding an Angel Fire Ignition with nothing to do with it. We'll probably end up Lightning Striking Gix on their turn. I should create a uh, playlist called Jank Brew's Worst Losses to chronicle the abysmal errors that I make like that one.
Oh man, well, I guess at least Angel Fire Ignition has flashback. <laughs> Although there aren't too many ways I can play it. <clears throat> so assuming Lily makes this discard, we'll respond by playing Sokadzon. Given what we've drawn and what they've played since, it's likely we'd have lost anyway. But... Still an egregious, embarrassing error with Narset. Enlightened Exile. Especially given that in game one or two, I was reminded that Narset can get Instance and sorceries. Really, it, it, not even instance or sorceries. A reminder that it can get anything. I, I could cast a Liliana of the Veil out of our opponent's graveyard. A copy of one, anyway. Just a reminder that Narset is, in fact, pretty good. Non creature, non land card with mana value less than Narset's power. We'll block here because we gotta. Looked like they had some interaction, or were contemplating some interaction. Right now, it looks like the only thing they could do is fire up Mishra's Foundry. Okay, so this would have been halfway decent a long time ago because we, we can't Restless Stormseeker and Angel Fire Ignition. So we are just dead. But we're going to play Angel Fire Ignition. Bash over it, Lily. Sure. We will now concede. I think we're two and two now. Should probably jot these things down, but I think we're two and two. We've got brass. And swap one of these bloodthirsty adversaries for a white mana source, and I would keep this. But I think because the only things we can cast are bloodthirsty adversaries, I'm inclined to mole. Oh, that's even worse. We're going to five. Okay, this is worse probably than the first hand, but um, I'm not even sure what to do with this, but I'm not going to four. I guess you could make the argument that any white source would allow us to likely be able to, oh, we're almost assuredly dead if they get the, I swear, like, this deck, every time they have Novice Inspector, and then they blow this up on turn two, uh, so consistently. Oh, they didn't blow it up, I'll take it. <clears throat> Do I want to consider? No. I'm going to wait. I think one of the only ways we can come back and win this goal, other than our opponent doing nothing, which they will probably flash in a guy here, yep, there's some reinforcements, uh, is to get value off of Monastery Mentor. They may consider waiting until we get this next draw to consider. War Leader's Call, 
probably means I just bounce this soldier and scry. Okay, lightning helix we definitely do not want. Alright, so we're gonna look for land. Fading Hope, kind of interesting. Uh, I don't want to bounce either of those, unfortunately. Or tokens. Okay, so there's a Sundown Pass. Play the Sundown Pass. Now I can Lightning Helix something. But it doesn't make good use of Monastery Mentor or Baral and Kari Zeb. So I think we're going to have to play the slower game. And I, I think we're going to slam out a Bloodthirsty Adversary as a Chump Blocker. Trading a card for a card, or a half a card, really, in the form of Resolute Reinforcements. Um, we could just hope to get more action off the top. We're going to get two draws, our next draw, where we'd be playing one of the two of those. So um, maybe I'll wait. We find Two draws to find some other way to... I mean, now I wish I had just helixed for no reason. Damn, five fives are hard for us to deal with. And I don't even like exiling Knight Errant because Convoke allows it to come back and they get a bunch of value off of it. Yep. Okay. So, we gotta hope they just don't do anything. Run on a Monastery Mentor. Hope we hit some way to trigger it this next turn. I mean, the best way for us to trigger it would just be draw a white mana source so we can flash Wandering Emperor. Ugh. Well, that plan is gone. And it's a special usefulness. Wondering Emperor still wouldn't be bad. Okay, Soul Partition feels pretty bad. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we have died. GG's. We've been defeated by Brass. I think we're now... Uh, I think we started at the bottom of Diamond Tier 3, so maybe we're back to dead even. I have to go back and watch this later, but... We're either dead even or we're behind one game. My performance has been weak as a Magic player with this deck. I do think of the Jank Brews that we've played recently, this is one of, if not the easiest deck to play, as long as you remember what Narset does. We've been playing a lot of serious Jank that creates difficult decision making, especially the Titania, Slogurk, Shauna deck. Wow, two non-white lands, five white spells. So we'll be mulling. Okay, we got our colors here. <clears throat> we can play a turn to Malcolm or Lightning Strike. So we're gonna hold on to this. We're gonna dump a Lightning Strike. Slam this deserted beach. Get ready to battle Marnius Calgar. Calgar? Yeah. Play a forest, I like these forests. Sharp-Eyed Rookie. Oh, I wonder if this is the... I don't feel... I don't really know what this is. I think there are a couple of decks that play this card. <clears throat> so the question is, do we allow them to do something with it? Uh, I don't think they're likely to be able to put more than one counter on it this next turn, so I think we're going to just go ahead and get a Reckless Stormseeker out here. Um, we're going to dump the Seacrum Coast just because it's going to enter the battlefield tap next turn. 
And I think I'd rather have these burn spells and reckless storm seeker in hand. Okay, Kodomo the West Tree is great for them because it's gonna allow them to ramp. Uh, and I'll hope we draw a land here because I'd like to remove both of those. We're gonna we're probably just gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, any other effects here? Uh, we're we're yeah, I'm that's straight up. I'm just gonna axe both of them. I'll probably have a decision to make. Oof, okay, not a not a difficult decision. And we will remember that we can cast cards out of their graveyard, despite them not having any that we can cast. And we'll really hope that they don't play some big ugly dude that gets in the way of Narset. Like like that. Uh, <laughs> man, super annoying. Um. Because we can't both Fading Hope, this fella, and Narset. And we don't have a way of removing this guy. Pretty annoying. So the only thing we can do is Malcolm potentially dumping the Fading Hope and then being able to do it next turn if they don't bash. They're not too far off from just being dead either. Okay. Oof. Yeah, we're going to dump Fading Hope, even though it's really annoying. Man, I don't know, because we could bounce this guy end of turn. I think we're going to do that. We're going we're gonna to try to bounce this guy end of turn. I don't want him to know we have Norset. So as long as they don't remove Stormseeker, plus this allows uh, Stormseeker to flip into Storm Charged Slasher. I think it's reasonable to consider they play two spells here, but whatever. I just like the tr the tr tricksy nature of this. That guy having Vigilance is also pretty annoying. So the hope is they just like bash pretty hard here. Yeah. Um, so in this case, we're just going to bounce this dude. Which will give us a scry. Uh, hmm. I don't know if I really want consider. I don't know that I don't want consider. It does give us trigger off Narset the next turn if we need it. Well, our opponent's going to concede. That makes it a little bit easier. I think they're probably dead anyway. They were certainly not in a good shape there. I think, I think we're at 3-3. Three and three. <laughs> I really could be wrong. We're either up 1 or we're dead even. lands and spells I would love to trade one of these pain lands or a showdown pass for an instant or sorcery but we're on the play we can do things on turns two and three and four so we're gonna keep <clears throat> oh man I was I was hoping they were gonna duress us there okay that's kind of annoying because it just gets in the way of bloodthirsty adversary but I think we're gonna play it out anyway I'm not going to attack. Virus Beetle. Mm, I'll dump here for now. I don't know whether I want to have Reckless Storm Seeker in play. I can at least bash. I mean, if they make us discard again, I'll just discard the Forge. Um... Just kind of do, gain a life draw card. 
We'll we'll play this. I don't know really what our opponent's doing, but part of me wanted to get the Monastery Mentor online and like activate it a bunch of times. Liliana the Veil. I don't think that changes my position much. 6-1 up does another. We played against Liliana a couple times already. Liliana, I think, is especially decent against us because... Um, we don't have a lot of creatures. My play here is Wandering Emperor. If they force us to discard, which is likely, I think I'm going to dump the Soul Partition unless they give us some reason not to. I, I worry about a deficiency of creatures. I, just, I hope they don't play two spells here, because I'd like to keep this, this guy flipped. Like a guy. Hmm. We're going to play a Monastery Mentor. Probably should have done this a different way. But, uh, should have plus that first just to see if they had a cut down. <clears throat> This dude have just haste. Uh, yeah. Sure. Liliana certainly got value, and we'll have to discard Malcolm. Exile Malcolm. Not gonna matter much for this deck, but there's Virtue. Bloodthirsty Adversary is close to being decent, but not very good right now. And I wouldn't, I don't know that I'd want to uh, full partition any of these dudes. So we're just gonna slam it out here. Plus here. have their own Wandering Emperor. There goes the Storm Seeker. Makes the top of our deck worse. Yeah, it would have been would have been nice there. We're gonna make a dude here. So we'll send these guys this way. Wasted a lot of damage on their planeswalkers so far. We're gonna see a virtue of persistence. Seem that. Uh, yep, yeah, you're gonna ETB. I'm gonna flash. You will not get Malcolm a second time. Two demo fields, Restless Fortress, Matawara is likely to get cast here, or uh, played as a land. Hmm. 
but we will see. Artifact creature, so it can bounce the land if they want to play it. Question is, do I care? Like, will I trade? I'm assuming they'd like double block or something like that. Um, but I don't know that I care. Okay, well, that's even better. I definitely don't care in this case. Mm, we're gonna dump Ottawara in this case. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cast this. Might be better for information later, but I want a lightning strike in the yard. I don't hate having a lightning strike in the yard. I don't know that I hate having one in hand either, so let's just draw it. I mean, I, I can cast it if I want to. Hmm, okay. Virtue of Persistence makes me want to not keep much in hand. So I think I'm going to fire this off. Let's go, we're just going for the dome. And we're going to, we're going to plus on to Malcolm. We are going to send the team. Any sort of burn spell will do. Not get us there. But we won't have anything in hand for them to get out of it. Uh, they could get a Monastery Mentor. Could be good if they have... Oh yeah, now they'll have a blocker for Malcolm. A lot of blockers, enough enough blockers. Unfortunately. I think we just bash and make them sort of like trade their board. I don't want to give them any favorable blocks, so I don't want to force them to block everything. So that means I gotta put a plus one plus one counter here. I'd rather do it on Malcolm so they don't gain life. But I don't really have a choice. I guess I did have a choice. Yeah. I'm going to hold on to that. Well, <laughs> I guess it's probably stupid because they're probably going to bring back a thing that makes me discard it, but whatever. I think I misplayed on the previous turn because they could not have chosen not to block Malcolm. They would have died in that case. So I could have kept them at one, which does give us two more off the top of the deck options. And Malcolm is gone, sadly. Oh, that's a great, great top deck for them. Although I think right now they don't have enough blockers and have just died. Well, Extraction Specialist... I don't know, this guy can't block at all. Um, so I think they're dead anyway.
They'll have to block that guy in this case. We've got the edge in this fight. Or they'll die to first strike damage. Yeah. Well, we didn't play the best, but we got there. Definitely up one now, at the very least. We're gonna play one more because I can't remember how many we played. So far, this makes me want to play another Narset, just because we haven't gotten enough Narset action. Just having a hasty Narset off the top of uh, your, your deck or out of your hand is pretty fun, especially knowing we can hit Liliana's and stuff if we just remember. Sure. We've got colors of mana. Things to do. Um, I think I'm going Shivan Reef. Just to have more and better options. Sure, you can do what you want, but we're gonna we're gonna play with Fire You regardless. We do that in response there because I don't want him taking that and then forcing us to use a lightning strike or a lightning helix on that dude. Because we have all these instants and sorceries, I wonder whether I want a bloodthirsty adversary here. We're going to do it anyway. <clears throat> I guess they have Liliana. <laughs> Like everybody else has had. I don't want to have that Restless Storm Seeker eating it. Um, man, Rafine is rough. Rafine is something I don't hate soul partitioning, though. Question is, do I do it now? The last thing I want to see is, say, Shieldred on the next turn. And then an attack with Rafine. But... We're going to be greedy. That's unfortunate. I could soul partition our bloodthirsty adversary, but we're not going to do it. I think I'm going to soul partition Rafine here. Hope they don't have a uh, counterspell. And it looks like they have a counterspell. Yep. Definitely going to need help from the top of the deck now. <clears throat> Zerfine just makes their draws so much better. A okay, Bloodthirsty Adversary is not the worst. Unfortunately, I can't I can't hit Rafine uh, because of the ward ability. Um, oh man, so the question is, do I wait a turn to see if I get one more Mana? One more land? I do have two things I can do. I can Lightning Strike and or Helix the Dome, which puts them to eight. I uh, feel like our chances are slim here, but... Youch. 
Now I could Lightning Helix and Lightning Strike Shieldred, two for one ourselves. Uh, but that probably is going to be the play. <laughs> uh, it is not a feel-good play, but we can't. We just can't have him gaining life off of the draws. Okay, we didn't get there with the land, but Narset is far from the worst. If Narset can just survive, we may not be that dead. Deep Cavern Bat, super annoying, although at least Narset, if Narset survives, can easily remove the Deep Cavern Bat. Please don't remove Narset. I know you don't want to remove Narset. I mean, if they have it, you think they'd just snap it off. Yeah, that's interesting. You gotta remember, we can also get stuff from their yard, so we can go for the throat. Okay, and there's the land. Okay, this is gonna be interesting, because uh, we can... I don't even know if I want to go for the throat here, but I want to get Bloodthirsty Adversary back. Uh... And I guess probably the best way for us to do that from here is uh, Lightning Helix or... I don't want to die either, so I'm, I'm contemplating Lightning Helixing the uh, Bloodthirsty Adversary. Or, or the Deep Cavern Bat. What happened? Oh, Denik. Holy crap. So much disappoint. Four, five, six, seven. We could just die. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so we need to draw a way to remove Denik, which gives us a way to remove Deep Cavern Bat. <laughs> uh, yeah, didn't get there. So, uh, man, we, we got Narset. And didn't even get to use it thanks to Denik. Well, now we're back to dead even if we were one, up one. Tempted to play one more. And uh, certainly when I get to the recap of this deck, I want another Narset. I, I just want to play more Narsets. And I almost wonder if a cantrip style Narset and Monastery Mentor deck wouldn't be better and or a little bit more fun. We have Narset in our opening hand. That, that's, this is really what we wanted to do is play Narset. So we're going to roll with that. I hope we don't need to play with fire on turn one. Don't Monastery Swift Spear us, bro. Okay. We'll play this fast land that we conveniently grabbed off the top. What if we're playing against control? I don't know. We're going to give this one more turn to see. Virtue of loyalty. Yep. Yeah. I'm just going to play with fire this dude. Wouldn't mind having something in the yard. If they're going to do anything, I want to encourage them to do it. Okay, yeah, wedding announcement. I could soul partition the wedding announcement. We're going to do it. Battlefield Forge, Narset. Anyone want to take bets on whether Narset survives? There's not a lot we can do with Narset, but a bashing 4-5 that also lightning shoots you in the face is a thing. Um. Hmm. 
given the cards that our opponent has played, they almost assuredly have uh, Wandering Emperor. I kind of don't want to do anything. Uh, can we, we... Oh. Oh, well, that's not in the graveyard, so we can't hit Wedding Announcement. But just a reminder, if Wedding Announcement was in the graveyard, we could make a copy of that. Uh, assuming Narset's power was one higher, right? Less than Narset's power. So we'd have to pump Narset. We could soak in Zen, um, such that when we bash, they get prowess triggers anyway. We're going to do that. We'll be really sad when Narset gets eaten by a Wandering Emperor. Well, I guess they weren't going to let us attack anyway, if that was the play. Nothing I can do about that. We'll just helix that. We were probably dead here, but... We just don't have enough action. We would need, like, another Narset or... or this uh, it makes kraken tokens yeah uh, bloodthirsty adversary isn't the worst these guys have trample um so bloodthirsty adversary could eat one of those guys could also just go to the dome for the play with fire to see what's on top of our deck might go that route <clears throat> i think the scry is worth one point of damage Yeah, definitely don't want a Ganjo here. Glad they're blocking. Kind of wish I had sent the other guy. Well, my assumption is they wouldn't block because you've got virtue of loyalty. Just need a land. There's the land. <laughs> the land that we just put on the bottom of our deck. So Virtue of Loyalty, all of a sudden those guys become much better. They can bash. I kept one back because I didn't want him bashing. Okay, uh, Bloodthirsty Adversary is pretty good here. And in this case, like, do, do I Soul Partition Virtue of Loyalty? I think they'd be able to cast the uh, instant version after you do exile it? Uh, maybe not, actually. I, I need to read the rules there, but... Um, I could just kind of force them into blocking um, by going straight for the dome. I'm going to go straight for the dome with a Lightning Helix. Knowing that I have a Lightning Strike in hand, if they don't block these adversaries, they're going to be pretty low on life. Uh, I need to know what this guy does. Invoke... Up to four target creatures. So we're just going to bash here and here. We're, I think we're going to send one more. And the reason for that is right now they can't hit this. Okay, they are double blocking, as I thought they might. They play another Virtue here. I don't hate it. I'm kind of thinking they would play Wedding Announcement. Well, if they don't, I'm not knowing what they have in hand. Okay. Oh, that gets them a whole bunch of dudes. So now we are definitely looking to the top of our deck. We're not blocking here. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 
don't see any way to gain life yet. So we're gonna pass. We're just looking for burn spells. Or another bloodthirsty adversary. I think we're letting them do whatever it is they want here. These guys having vigilance is just crazy annoying. We could just prevent that from happening. There's no way that we're getting through these dudes. So we may want to just prevent them from getting this guy, which we can do right now. Sure, they don't have any creatures to untap anyway. They could do a heck of a syncopate on our lightning strike. Yep, they'll get to draw a card off of wedding announcement. Yeah. Whatever. I'm lightning striking you. Go. <laughs> Come on, top of the deck. Stormseeker is not good enough. But if we don't die, Stormseeker would put uh, Norset online. Being a Narset without some sort of removal could cast the Lightning Strike. If they're really smart, they'll exile one of their own dudes. Unless they think they can win. Maybe they can win. Um, at least just bashing everyone our direction. Maybe forces us to block with Stormseeker, especially if they play uh, a 2 2. Okay, they are getting their own dude, which means we're almost certainly dead. I like this play by La Chips 08. Good job. Nice 11 11. Remember your training. Uh, so we got a block. We're just going to slam here and take 20. And because of their good play. Exiling their own dude. I don't think we have any top decks. Soul Partition, definitely not good enough. We're going to cast it. GG's. You have achieved victory. So I, I, think, <laughs> I think we're back to like dead even. I think we started around the bottom of Diamond 3, uh, and we're, we're there. I've made some egregious players in the piloting of this deck. But despite those, I think we would have lost the games that we lost anyway. Uh, so let's take a quick glance before we wrap up. Reminder that if you like this sort of janky content, like and subscribe on wherever you watch it. Uh... I want to revisit the mana. Uh, I did a, a haphazard job of putting it together. I would like to play another Narset.
Malcolm was good. It doesn't necessarily fit this deck. So as alternatives, we could go a little bit lower to the ground and play Delver of Secrets. I believe is in standard right now. We could play Monastery Swift Spear. Plays well with Monastery Mentor and Narset. We can move away from the Reckless Storm Seeker version. So I do rather like the two of these together. As an alternative, we could cut the Go Wide Prowess strategy altogether. And just play better standalone magic cards. I do think that Baral and Karizev uh, is worthy of revisiting. Yeah, jury's still out on this one. I think there's a version of this deck that could be both fun and good, uh, but we're not quite there yet. Anyway, thanks for watching.